San Francisco, a global center of economic activity, arts, and sciences, and is home to some of the largest private companies in the world. At the same time, it is also a popular tourist destination, known for its steep rolling hills, eclectic mixture of culture and architecture, and landmarks such as Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz, cable cars, and its various districts. I got an opportunity to visit San Francisco in the summer of 2022. My wife had a business trip, so I tagged along to see what this beautiful city has to offer, and I wasn't disappointed. In this video, I'll give you my recommendations on what all you can do if you have a day in San Francisco. Lombard Street For the most part, Lombard Street is like any other street. But what it is famous for is a steep, one-block stretch of eight hairpin turns, giving it the title of the crookedest street in the world. Decorated with lovely flowers, green bushes, and views of San Francisco Bay at a distance, this section provides one of the most picturesque spots in San Francisco, a reason why thousands of visitors flock the street every day during the peak of summer. Another gem of a place and one of San Francisco's most recognizable landmarks is Palace of Fine Arts. Originally built as a temporary structure during Panama Pacific Expo in 1915, the palace was torn down and completely rebuilt in 1960s. Inspired by ancient Roman and Greek architecture, the palace is built around an artificial lagoon and provides some great spots for Instagrammable pictures. Pro tip, with an exception to a few, most of the spots I'm going to cover in this video fall on this red path. I would recommend that you rent a bike or walk to cover these at your own pace. One of the most popular tourist attractions, Fisherman's Wharf, gets its name from its early days when Italian immigrant fishermen came to the city to take advantage of the gold rush. The area still reflects the same culture and character with plenty of seafood restaurants, some even going back to three generations of the same family ownership. The other attractions are Pier 39, Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, Ripley's Museum, and a local market. This is a place from where you can also catch ferry to Alcatraz Island. As you cross Fisherman's Wharf sign and keep walking towards the west on Jefferson Street, you'll reach San Francisco Maritime National Historic Park and Aquatic Park Cove. It's a nice little park with a beach where you'll see some historic vessels anchored on one side and views of Golden Gate Bridge on the other. As you walk on the western edge of the cove, you'll get to the municipal pier. The edges of the pier are dilapidated, and they have signs of Save the Pier project stuck on the railings. I would stay away from the edges, but the middle of the pier is pretty safe to walk or bike on, and it presents some great close-up views of Alcatraz Island and the Golden Gate Bridge. As you exit the pier, you will see a trail going up Fort Mason. Fort Mason was a coastal defense site and was used as a port of embarkation for military during World War II. Today it's a recreation area that consists of parks and historic district with many of the older military buildings converted into cultural facilities. From the Great Meadow Park High Point, you will get a good view of the surrounding districts of the city. Music 
Continue on the trail through the park and you'll get to the Marina District, a beautiful upscale neighborhood along the way. You'll see traditional European style houses on one side and a lush green park with expansive views of Golden Gate Bridge and yachts on the other. The district is known for its upbeat bars and restaurants that you can explore if you have more time. By now you would have noticed that we are moving closer and closer to our main attraction, the Golden Gate Bridge. When you arrive at the end of the Marina Boulevard, you can either turn left towards Palace of Fine Arts or turn right to go to the Chrissy Field Beach. It's a really nice beach to spend the afternoon and surf or throw some frisbee or just picnic. You'll get some very beautiful unobstructed views of Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz from here. Cross the Chrissy Field and you'll see a trail going up towards the Golden Gate. The trail climbs up quickly and presents several viewpoints of the bridge, each better than the previous one. And finally, you arrive at one of the most internationally recognized symbols of California, one of the wonders of the modern world, the Golden Gate Bridge. You can cross to the Pacific side of the bridge through a narrow underpass and explore the historic military structures called Battery Cranston and Battery Marcus Miller and enjoy some more gorgeous views of the bridge and the Pacific Ocean. There's a narrow trail going downwards to the beautiful Marshalls Beach. That'll be a good addition to your itinerary. By the time we reached the World War II Memorial, it was already very cloudy. Fog in summers is a very common phenomenon that happens when rising hot air in California's inner valleys create a low pressure area that draws cool winds from the Northern Pacific through the Golden Gate. This fogged out our plans to capture any views of Golden Gate Bridge from the other side of the bridge, popularly known as Battery Spencer, both literally and figuratively. So, we took a cab to our last stop, The Painted Ladies, before heading for dinner at one of the many Italian restaurants in the North Beach area that are really good. We explored two of them, Tony's Pizza and Mona Lisa. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.